If you just lost a jury trial, you're probably thinking, what do I do from here? You got that feeling in the pit of your stomach, as, as I talk about in many of my videos, because the criminal justice process is stressful. But especially in that post trial phase, whether you've been sentenced or you're awaiting sentencing, you're thinking, I've heard of appeals. How do I do that? It's actually easier than you may think. Appeals in Pennsylvania are handled in criminal cases by the Superior Court, unless it's a death penalty case, and that's kind of a separate issue. So let's put death penalty cases aside. But your average case goes up to the Superior Court after sentencing. So if you've had a trial and you haven't been sentenced yet, almost no chance. There's very, very slim situations, but usually you would not be able to go to Superior Court until you've been sentenced. Now, in situations where you can go up to Superior Court before the sentencing, very rare, you can also ask the court to hold your sentence in abeyance, meaning you don't serve your sentence while while an appeal is pending. Also very rare, but something you can do. That doesn't really answer your question or the thing that brought you to this video, which is how do you file an appeal in Pennsylvania? It's really easy, actually. There's just one form. It's called a notice of appeal. And in the Pennsylvania Rules of Criminal Procedure and Appellate Procedure, there's a form. And you just submit that form, you sign it. Usually a county has a fee, the Superior Court has a fee, it's a couple hundred dollars, uh, depending on your county. And you pay that, and then boom, you've filed your appeal. But that doesn't really do anything. That's where the lawyer comes in and having a good lawyer and an appellate lawyer and a criminal appellate lawyer that knows what he or she is doing. Because after you file that notice of appeal, then the trial court judge is going to send out what's called a 1925B order. What does that mean? In the rules of appellate procedure, 1925B, you don't need to remember that, but I'm a nerd, right? They don't give anyone these, bow, just anyone these bow ties. That's the rule that mandates what's called the statement of matters complained of on appeal or statement of issues complained of on appeal depending on your county. People call them different things. The judge is going to issue an order directing the appellant, which is whoever lost at the trial, to file a statement of matters complained of on appeal. And in that statement of matters complained of on appeal, which is a very long name that I've repeated several times now, it's a little bit clunky to say, but in that statement, whoever's appealing has to list all the issues they want the superior court to raise. And that is a strategy decision. We can put anything in there you want. Doesn't mean they're going to be meritorious. Doesn't mean you're going to get anywhere. But at some point, usually between filing the statement and then filing the actual brief, you really want to winnow those down. I like to have less than five issues, ideally one to three if possible. If Superior Court sees your case and they see 25 issues, they know you're grasping at straws. You're throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. But if they see one, two, three issues, they know, okay, maybe there's something here. Uh, maybe you've got 25 legitimate issues, but more likely than not, you don't, right? Cases don't go that crazy. And if they go crazy, usually it's one or two ways that they went crazy, an evidentiary ruling or um, the prosecutor saying something ridiculous or a witness saying something that should have resulted in a mistrial, things like that, which can be crazy, but it's still, as far as the Superior Court is concerned, only one issue. Here's the thing. When the trial court issues the 1925B order saying, file this concise statement within 21 days, if you don't file it, you're done. The appeal's done. You've waived all your issues and that's the end of it. So you have to preserve all of your issues in that statement. And I'll do another video about the actual appellate process, but that's really what kicks it off. The appellant files a notice of appeal. You have to attach certain things. You have to attack a docketing statement. You have to attach proof that the transcripts have already been filed. Uh, you have to show that there's been a judgment entered. All that has to get attached with the notice of appeal, but the notice itself is really just one form, very easy to fill out. And there's a template right in the rules that you have to file. Now that doesn't get filed with superior court. It gets filed with the trial court. So it's simple, but also gets complex very, very quickly, which is why it's good to have a lawyer in your corner that handles appeals. Uh, I've won cases at the Superior Court and the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. So this is something I do every day uh, is help people with these kinds of things. So I know what I'm talking about, and hopefully you've learned a little bit. If you have, hit the subscribe button so you can see what else we've got coming down the pike and learn a little bit more. But of course, if you need legal representation, call a lawyer. If you want a really good looking lawyer, call me or someone that looks like me, and uh, we'd be happy to help you. Again, I'm Josh Campson. I'm an attorney with Miller, Turetsky, Rule McLennan in Collegeville. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks very much.